Well, how, hello out there, folks. Uh, hey, your friendly neighborhood hatchet man, Brother Craig here. Uh, welcome to today's Sunday message. Uh, I have a question to ask you. Uh, in whose name do you come? And it's a question that you should ask anyone who comes before you with any type of information, any type of declaration, any type of stance that they desire that you should consider, okay? You need to ask that person, whether you ask them out loud or whether you silently ask this in your own heart and mind when you're watching uh, the news, when you're listening to your preacher, when you're listening to you know, anyone articulate, we're, we're, we're in an age where every, everyone has an opinion now, okay? <laughs> so ask yourself even of that person in whose name do they come, okay? Now, word of God here, from the book of John, the thief cometh not except to steal, to kill, and destroy. Okay? Now, that's what Jesus says of the thief. Okay? The thief comes to do those three things. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says of himself... Okay, I come that they might have life and they might have life more abundantly. So I come in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to have life, okay, from the womb to the tomb, okay? I want you to have life, and I want you to have life more abundantly. I think our president, Donald J. Trump, wants you to have life and wants you to have life more abundantly. Those that oppose President Trump are the same people that oppose Jesus Christ. They are the same people that oppose our Christian faith. Throughout history, these various incarnations of the coalition of evil, one of the main things they always fight is Christianity, okay? Now, people like to say, oh, well, they're just against religion. No, they have a special animus for Christianity because Christianity is true religion, okay? It's true religion. They can tolerate Islam as long as they're not blowing things up. They just want to just kind of do their thing. But see, Christians, we don't blow things up. The only thing we blow up are false ideas, okay? False idols. That's what we blow up, okay? And so, which is it's more powerful because it's a spiritual blowing up. It's a spiritual power, all right? And so... When you have to use a bomb to blow up things that you disagree with, you do that because you have to use the physical because you lack the spiritual, okay? And so Islam lacks spiritual power. So therefore, they have to, I'm going to read it again because it's the word of God. It's not the word of Brother Craig. They have to. They have to steal, kill, and destroy, okay? Black Lives Matter Incorporated. They have to steal, kill, and destroy. Antifa, they have to steal, kill, and destroy. The Democrat Party, think about this. They run uh, every city where all of this chaos there is run by Democrats. What's happening in these cities? They're stealing, they're killing, they are destroying, okay? The Democrats lack the spiritual power because they are not of God, okay? And saying, so, don't hand me this stuff about, I'm sorry, Reverend Chickenfoot, I don't want to hear it. 
Okay, I really don't. As a matter of fact, the only time I want to hear Reverend Chickenfoot talk this stuff is if I could sit on the stage and on the right hand side and Reverend Chickenfoot can sit on the left hand side. Okay, and we can we can talk about it in front of an audience. All right. Or in front of a camera. Then, then I'd like to hear what Reverend Chickenfoot has to say. All right. And ditto for these demon crap politicians. Ditto for these neoliberal left wing idiots. Okay. I'd love to sit on a stage and have these people defend this nonsense in face of a man who totes a set of onions who is unafraid to defend Christian faith, conservative values, constitutional limits, and capitalistic opportunity, okay? Because we, we're going to break a lot of this down with Bible verses. We're going to find out what Jesus Christ, okay? What does Jesus think of this, all right? Because as you know, I like to share not thus saith Brother Craig, but I like to share thus saith the Lord. All right. And I talk about the two things that people say in polite company you never discuss. You're supposed to never discuss politics and religion in polite company. Well, I not only talk about both, I combine both. Okay. The Holy Bible is the most political book ever written ever written, okay? And so how Reverend Chickenfoot can week after week after week, day after day after day, year after year after year, how the joker can stand in the pulpit and not discuss, not even comment on politics, or if he does, he, you know, it's two or three minutes. Well, we, we just, we're going to pray for everyone. And we, you, know, our, you know, our nation, we're going through some very tense times now. And we, you know, we'd like to pray for, you know, everything to just work out well. And then he'll go on with his pre-planned sermon doing the same thing he's been doing for 30 years. Okay? Same thing I grew up as a boy here. Same sermons I heard as a boy that this is what they're doing with no linkage to what's happening today. Now, those that have infiltrated the church, those that have infiltrated other institutions, Hollywood, academia, more and more and more, the corporate world, okay? It, they first infiltrated the advertising branch of the corporate world. Now they've act, they've taken over the CEO um, suite uh, of, of many corporations. Black Lives Matter has $1.6 billion in donations, okay? Now, here we're here doing the Lord's work and... Uh, you know, we had some 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 months we have a hard time coming up with one point six thousand. Talk about one point. Well, most months we would have a hard time coming up with that. OK. And one point six million dollars from mostly big corporations. OK. They think they are purchasing. They think that, OK, if I just give them some money, then when it comes to my business, they will not do this, what the Bible says the thief comes to do, to steal, to kill, and to destroy, okay? This is what they think, all right? How'd that work out for Starbucks? Burnt down right here in my hometown of Richmond, Virginia. They burnt one of the Starbucks down. Now, Starbucks, they're so pro-black. They're like, they should rename it Tarzan Bucks. Talk about Starbucks. You know, the great big white Tarzan who thumps on his chest and does the Tarzan yell and he's going to come and he's going to save the savages that cannot, they're too ignorant to save themselves running around naked with the bone in the nose. Okay. That's Tarzan. The great, the great big white man, he, you know, a guy like me, I'm, I'm bad. I'm an uncle Tom or, you know, what's the other the coconut? Another one, a friend of mine <laughs> shared me brown on the outside white on the inside. I'm Jesus on the inside, okay? And my outside is irrelevant, okay? So yeah, so I'm brown, but so what, okay? So what? I could be darker brown. I could be jet black. I could be a little bit pinkish, you know, because I've never met a, a show enough white person. But, you know, they're pink, they're beige, you know, they're orange, okay? Or going to a tanning booth. Okay. And I'm not knocking Trump. I'm just poking a little humor. I love the man. 
I, I, I truly love the man. I think he's appointed by God Almighty, uh, just like I'm appointed by God Almighty to man my section of the wall. Now, I'm a watchman. Donald Trump is a watchman. Now, his section of the wall is a whole lot bigger than my section. It may be bigger than your section, but you have a section of the wall to man as a watchman or a watchwoman on the wall, okay? And I'm just encouraging you to man your section of the wall, okay? And if you think that's not biblical, you go to the book of Nehemiah. And it talked about how the wall was being rebuilt and how each person repaired the section of the wall that was near their home, okay? And so, and the first one that's mentioned were the preachers, okay? That was the first one mentioned in the book of Nehemiah, the priests, okay? They have a section of the wall, okay? But you have a section, if it's no more than just your family, your personal family, your personal business, and everywhere where you go, you have a circle of influence, okay? And so when you show up, people should think, ooh, there's something about that person. You know, there should be an, an aura of respect, okay? Because you are a watchman, okay? There's, you exude a certain something, a certain sin or say quoi. <laughs> anyway, but look, let me get on uh, to the program today. And, uh, and I really appreciate uh, you all being there, okay? You know, I get a little silly at times, so don't, don't mind me. We try to, you know, being a, look, being a watchman is serious business, but if you can't have a little fun doing it, you know, life gets to be a, a little bit boring, okay? So, <laughs> now, um, John chapter 10, okay? Now, powerful. And I hope, I'm going to try not to hold you for a whole hour like I normally do. I know, you know, people have been telling me that it's, uh, you know, an hour is a mighty long time, Brother Craig. Okay, so, you know, hopefully it's not a wasted hour. We try to pack a lot in these hours, but I'm I'm trying to cut the time down a little bit. But uh, some of the other, if you, if you have to go away, you can come back later. We post these on our YouTube channel, uh, Brother Craig the Hatchet Man is the name of the YouTube channel. I would encourage you to uh, subscribe. Uh, to the YouTube channel, and if you have not done so, sign up for the newsletter at our website, thereallyrealdeal.com. Five words, okay? The really real deal dot com. All right. And so uh, every time we do a new posting, uh, you will get an email that next morning with that post to include these Sunday messages that I do every Sunday, as well as any other. Uh, you know, if the Lord moves me to do uh, one or two during the week, uh, you know, four or five, six minute versions of passing events, then I will do so. And uh, and you will get them. So now the um, the other uh, Bible stories that we're going to discuss later in the program for those was one of the big things that the big bugaboos that the le neoliberal left uses is this hatred of capitalism and so uh and they try to hijack jesus as though it's just you know he's this uh this this nice man who's you know this violins this cherubs floating around him playing the violin and another cherub is throwing rose petals down and everything out of his mouth is peace and love and take take all of all of the money from the rich man and give it to the poor man <laughs> nothing could be further from the truth folks okay and these people they do not open their bible they cannot cite in the bible where it's it, it says any of that okay but i can s cite some things in the bible that are a defense of capitalism okay and i'm going to do so today okay so now Again, in whose name do you come, okay? The destroyer or the giver and sustainer of life, okay? Now, we're going to go straight to the, um, well, there's one other thing I need to, I need to make a, before we go to our, the next subject, okay? I want to make a linkage to this destruction of, um, you know, it was brought to my attention another uh, silver bullet for the 
Chinese Wuhan virus, okay? They call it COVID-19. I call it the Chinese Wuhan virus, okay? Which is a, a biological weapon that uh, our Chinese enemies launched against this nation with the help of the Democrat Party, okay? And so, because, you know, under the Obama administration, the uh, Centers for Disease Control had a multi-billion dollar grant that was given to the very same Wuhan laboratory uh, where this uh, this virus originated, which is nothing more than SARS-2, okay? We remember SARS-1 several years ago, okay? The world didn't come to an end with SARS-1, and there was SARS-2, it's, and it, it's, it seems some people are saying the world is coming to an end, and, and that's because it's been weaponized twice, okay? The Chinese enemy, the external enemy, and remember now, any person that has ever uh, served in the military or any other function or a public official, you won an election, you had to take an oath, and that oath said that you would defend the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, both foreign and domestic, okay? Repeat, you would defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Why was that put into the oath? Because it's known throughout human history that there are two ways to defeat a nation from the outside and from the inside, okay? And China wrote a book in 1999 titled Unrestricted Warfare, okay? So where they admitted that you cannot defeat a nation that is superior to you in every way, okay? With conventional means, okay? You cannot bring uh, a flotilla of battleships. You cannot bring, uh, airplanes, okay? You can't do it just by shooting missiles, all right? Because why? We have more we have more airplanes, okay? We have better airplanes, we have more ships, we have better ships, we have more missiles, we have better missiles, okay? We have missiles that can shoot their missiles out of the sky, all right? We know this, they know this. Now, they're rapidly they're closing the gap with us, but we're still far ahead of them, okay? Uh, both in quality and certainly in quantity. So they wrote, and they wrote this now. So this, this is no mystery. This was written in 1999. This was written 21 years ago, written and published, okay? That unrestricted warfare, meaning all methods of war, all methods of doing what Jesus said the thief would do. The thief would do what? Okay. Book of John chapter 10. Okay. Said he comes not except, don't be coming for one reason only. Okay. The only reason he's coming is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Okay. China steals as much intellectual property as they can. They have killed us with this virus and they're sowing seeds. They're uh, very much a part of all of these um, protests around the country that are destroying uh, the uh, cohesiveness of our communities, putting black against white, uh, uh, owners against um, workers, you know, cat classic um, takeover of a capitalist, capitalist society, okay? to go to those that they are easily able to convince them that they are dispossessed, okay? Notice I said that they convince them that they are dispossessed. To see in the reality, there's no such thing as a dispossessed person in America because being that you have the freedom to get up off your butt and try, you're not dispossessed, okay? Jesus took the man who was at the, at the, at the, um, at the uh, pool had been for 38 years waiting for the water to be troubled so he could jump in and get healing, okay? And Jesus gave him a healing without him jumping in the pool. He just said, get up and walk. The man got up and walked. 
So he thought he was dispossessed. So a communist would come along, Antifa would come along, Black Lives Matter would come along, the Soviets, Stalin would come, um, Hitler would come, okay? These people would come along, Mao Zedong would come along, and they would say to that man, well, you're dispossessed. You need to join us. You need to vote against those evil rich people. Jesus comes along tells the man, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not dispossessed. Get up off your hind parts and walk. Man got up and walked. Got up and walked. And they tell me, politics and religion should not be joined together. Yeah, right. Okay, so this these events that are unfolding right before our face, okay? The, this new medicine, it's not new, it's actually 50 years old. It's a new application of the medicine that has 100, just like the hydrochloroquine, okay? You go back in my archive and look at the program I did. Is there a balm in Gilead? B-A-L-M. Is there a balm in Gilead, okay? And... You know, I talked about hydroxychloroquine. Uh, the root of it is quinine, which is a 400-year-old treatment. Okay, uh, in 1820, it was uh, put in a powder form. Then in the 19, I think in the 1940s, it was refined further still. And the version that is available today has been given to like hundreds of millions of doses over the years with not one fatality, not one, okay? And it's a, uh, something that is a, is a treatment early on, okay? And now this other uh, treatment, which is um, atomized, meaning that you inhale it, okay? You, in an atomizer, you, you, cre you create a mist with steroids and you, it's because it's basically a respiratory issue because, uh, even SARS is severe acute respiratory syndrome. S-A-R-S, severe acute respiratory syndrome. And if you treat it early, it's 100% uh, treatable, okay? Whether you're doing it with this, uh, this steroidal, uh, let me, as a matter of fact, I have it pulled up on the computer here. And again, this is we're in our subject here of to kill, steal, and destroy. This is what these people do. They they are not uh, they are not uh, making a mistake. Okay, it's not that they are they're ignorant and they just they just don't know. That's not the case. Okay, these people are evil and they're wicked and they are murdering people. Okay, there's no it's no different from Dr. Mengele in the doctors in the Nazi regime. They were doctors too, you know, and in our country, we think, oh, put a white coat on him, that's a scope around your neck, and oh, well, this Dr. Fauci, or oh, it's Dr. Burks, okay? These people are evil, just like, you know, if you could bring Dr. Mengele back and you could put a white jacket on him and a thetoscope around his neck, and put him in front of a, a, a TV camera and all these idiots on Fox News and CNN and MSNBC, uh, they would just give him all kinds of credibility. Well, Dr. Mengele, you know, tell us, what do you think about this virus, sir? And then it get put the microphone in front of his face and you'd have evil Nazi Dr. Mengele and you'd have a, millions of idiots out here thinking, oh, well, Dr. Mengele said, you know, we should just go home and close the door and, and, you know, and if we get sick, then we can go to the hospital and get on a ventilator. And see, it's, it's the height of evil. It's the height of evil. And our preachers need to preach this, okay? I'm one man preaching this. I'm one, okay? Can you imagine if every preacher of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ would stop whining and crying like a little Girl Scout. Ooh, ooh, I can't get political. Half my congregation is Democrats. They might stop coming to church. You know, there are a whole lot of folks that might stop coming to church if more truth were preached, okay? And so 
let him that will come, okay? Just preach the truth. And then those that don't want to hear the truth, let them not come. Let them not come, okay? There's some church out there somewhere where they're preaching lies. Let them go to that church, okay? You know, maybe it's some pruning is needed, just like in, in uh, husbandry of plants. You have to prune, okay, for the health of the plant. You can't let the plant just keep getting bigger and bigger. You know, a storm comes and it's going to get broken off anyway. So you might as well prune, have a healthy plant, and it won't break. It, it, it won't get diseased. It won't die. Okay? So, but this um, clarithomycin is, is one of these. It's a classic corticosteroid. Okay? One is called butisonide. Okay, it's administered via a nebulizer. Okay, and then you have this uh, this oral antibiotic known as clarithomycin. All right, and so you combine those two, and they say it has it has, and this is a, a treatment that was uh, patented in 1973. Okay, 1973. All right, not quite as long as hydroxychloroquine, but a very very long time very long track record is even has been given to little infants okay very very safe very safe okay and so but what they're wanting to do is come up with a vaccine so that uh, and i think uh i forget the name of the company but one company recently got a 1.5 billion dollar contract to create a vaccine it's an unnecessary vaccine i'm not taking it okay you can do what you like. I will not take their vaccine, period. Okay? And if they tell me I can't go certain places because I have not taken the vaccine, then I won't go to those places. Okay? It's just like I don't wear the mask. And if the people insist, well, you can't come in here without a mask on, then I just say, well, thank you, sir. I'll take my money elsewhere. And that's what I do. Okay? I take my money where I'm welcome. And uh, but now here recently, I've, I've had to do that. I've had to walk out of some places because they wouldn't let me in. But here recently, I've learned that all you have to do is tell these people that I have a health condition that prevents me from ha having to wear a mask. And by HIPAA regulations, which is federal law, they cannot deny you access, nor can they even ask you what that uh, condition is. OK, now. There have been a couple of times when I just volunteered what the condition is. And the condition is I need the full amount. I need the mixture of oxygen and, uh, and, and nitrogen and carbon dioxide that God created in the atmosphere. That's the, that's the amount I need. Okay. 35% oxygen, 64% nitrogen, what? Five or 6% carbon dioxide, whatever, whatever it is. Okay. But when you rebreathe, if you exhale carbon dioxide, when you rebreathe that, you're not getting that small amount of carbon dioxide that's naturally in the air. You're rebreathing your respiratory waste product. And there are many people that have actually died from wearing masks all day long. They've died from this. Okay. And you won't find this on the news. Google it, okay? Just now, remember, when you Google stuff, you have to be persistent because Google will give you uh, wrong information in the first 15 or 20 items. You have to click the next page and the next page and bury it down deep into Google will be the truth. They're not Google will not give you the truth right up front. So be persistent, okay? Be persistent. So, but the information is out there, okay? And it's, you know, not trying to make anyone sick or anything, uh, but these, these viruses are floating in the air. The human body has the ability, if you do not have a compromised immune system, your human body has the ability to handle this. And people are not explaining this properly because this is a psychological warfare program that's being run on this nation. It's not medical science, okay? People are not going to die from this, okay? And the uh, the 150,000 or so that have died, uh, most of them 
had other diseases and many that did not die from COVID. They're saying they died from COVID. And now, when people have to, uh, when people have to, when people have to really, really lock themselves down, it's because their system is so compromised, they're weak. And so what these evil Democrats did, and remember, they are the, a member in good standing of the coalition of evil. They introduced sick people into places, nursing homes, and which is literally giving a death sentence to people. And then that's the first thing they did was they introduced the, they introduced the virus in the nursing homes, all right? because healthy people, your immune system handles it just like it would if you got a cold, okay? But people 80, 90 years old, their immune system can't handle it. So they got them sick. Then the second thing they did was they denied them proven medication, which is hydroxychloroquine. And remember now, I did this program uh, uh, two months ago, I think. Is there a bomb in Gilead? Just go to my YouTube channel. It's there, okay? Hydroxychloroquine has been working for 400 years, folks. And in a, in a form that you get it today, it's been uh, working for 65 years, okay? It, and it, it, work, it has 100% efficacy, all right? And so, and then I found out yesterday through this website called covidsilverbullet.com, covidsilverbullet.com, Okay. I find out that now there's this new one with this nebulizer that's been around since 1973, and it also has 100% efficacy. But this is what has to happen. When you have to treat people early, you don't wait until they need to be put on a ventilator, okay? And so the evil, wicked um, Democrats in these Democrat states, and I think unwittingly, uh, Trump allowed these people to manipulate him. I can remember when uh, Governor Cuomo was whining and crying about, oh, we need ventilators. We need ventilators. OK. And then President Trump would be he would boast about, well, they said they needed ventilators. Well, we sent them 20,000 ventilators. We got all these companies to stop making cars and start making ventilators. We we're the king of ventilators. A ventilator is a beautiful thing. Yeah. No, nothing but ventilators. And uh, we have so many ventilators. We have ventilators left over. We have ventilators. We're going to send them around the world. Okay. And the medical science is that these ventilators are, in some cases, they're killing people. Okay. Because they're waiting too late to treat people. They're waiting until... They, they they have, you know, again, SARS is severe acute respiratory syndrome and the COVID is nothing but SARS too. That's what it is. Okay. Look it up. That's what it means. Okay. And so they came up with this new name COVID to hide that fact from you. And they want to call it a novel. It's like it's new. Oh, we've never seen anything like this. Okay. We get the flu every year that's more dangerous and more virulent and more people die from it every year, particularly the young, okay? Uh, young people, uh, children in schools, they get the flu, a few die from the few, flu, and they transmit the flu to teachers and parents and elders. With the Chinese Wuhan virus, children do not get sick. Even if they contract the virus, their immune systems are strong and they handle it, okay? They do not get symptomatic. They do not transmit it to teachers. They do not transmit it to parents. They do not transmit it to adults. This is all known, proven science. And yet we have all this information that schools won't open, okay? And God bless Donald Trump. He took the hydroxychloroquine inside his own body, okay? That's leadership. He has stated it's safe to go back to school I will send my own, his own son, Baron, okay? He will send his own son to in-person school. That's leadership, okay? That's leadership. He has stated when uh, the people come up with a vaccine, 
Now, he can have this one, okay, because I'm not doing it. He has stated he will take the vaccine. Brother Craig is not going to take the vaccine. That I can promise you, okay? You know, a Trump quote. And again, I love Trump. <laughs> that I can promise you, okay? I'm not taking it, all right? It's totally, it's totally unnecessary, totally unnecessary, okay? So steal, kill, and destroy. The people that want to make money off of this are stealing, okay? The people that want power are killing. The people that want to transform society are destroying, okay? The coalition of evil, okay? And so uh, just remember that steal, kill, and destroy. You just think of all the billions of dollars. They can't get rich off of hydroxychloroquine. It costs four cents per uh, dose. They can't get rich off of, uh, what's the name of this other one? Um, Clarithomycin and I've got it right here. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, the one that they nebulize. Um, I had it right here. Okay. This Budasonide. Okay. Um, three cents per dose. Okay. Three cents per dose. Hydroxychloroquine will actually... In some places, hydroxy is four cents per dose. In most of the world, it's four cents per dose. For some reason, the same medicine in the United States of America is 36 cents per dose, okay? But still, any medicine that is a, an existing medication, right, where anyone can produce it, it's not a new medicine where the person, the, the entity or company that created it has exclusive rights to manufacture it and they jack the price up in order to recoup all of the um, research and development money because they spend millions and millions of dollars to create new medications. Now, quite often, all they're doing is making a minute change in an existing medication as an excuse to have this new medication that they can charge you a lot of money for, okay? And so... That's stealing. So the enemy, the thief, they come not except to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay. Now, I've been on that subject long enough. Let's move on to um, another bugaboo that the people that want to destroy this country, they hate Christian faith. You know, we who are in the 5C coalition, the Christian Conservative Constitutional Capitalistic Coalition, okay, Christian Conservative constitutional capitalistic coalition okay the five c's we who believe we believe in these things all right we have enemies that fight these things all right so the number one thing that they fight is our christian faith the communist party infiltrated seminaries in the 1930s and 1940s okay back during World War II, they infiltrated, okay? So by the time the 1960s came around, they had the people that they had planted, young people that they had planted in the bottoms of these places had risen to the top and were running the show, okay? So the next time that things blew up in this country was the 60s, all right? And so this is destruction from within. This is communism 101. This is what they do. All right. You know, they teach you all these nice sounding things. Oh, it's going to be kumbaya and nobody's going to be rich. No one's going to own anything. There'll be no reason for anyone to fight and we're going to all get along. And you can just you can have a little hut or a little teepee and a little garden and you can just be at peace. OK. And the people that run the show, if you don't accept your hut, your teepee and your garden plot, they will kill you. They will not live in a hut, nor will they live in a teepee. No, they will not live in a little hogan. Okay. All right. I lived out in Albuquerque, New Mexico for a while. And people still live in these little itty bitty hoguns. Okay. The people that run the show are going to live the same way these Democrat uh, big wigs live today. They're going to continue to do that. They're going to have big mansions. They're going to have a gated security, 
a gated a fence, a, a, a security guard. He's going to have a gun. You can't have a gun, but their security guard will have a gun. And they're going to live well, and they're going to be safe. And their children are going to uh, attend the, the very best of everything. And they're going to rear their children up to rule over your children. That is communism 101. That is the goal. The goal is not this nice sounding uh, garbage that they teach these idiots in college. That's not the goal. Okay. The people out marching all oh, where capitalism is evil. So let's see what our big brother, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ has to say about capitalism and investing. Okay. And so we've got two versions of this story, uh, one uh, told by um, Matthew, okay? And another one told by Luke, okay? So now this is uh, Matthew's version. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country called who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one, he gave five talents, okay? A talent is an, a certain amount of gold, and it's a lot of money, okay? If you were to, from then to today, okay? It's a lot of money, okay? So he gave five units or five talents of gold to one servant. Another servant, he gave two. And to another one, he gave one, okay? So you, the first thing you might say, the communists would say, well, Brother Craig, you know, why he didn't give each one of them two? Or why he didn't give each one of them three? Why did he give one five, one two, and the other one one? Answer is right here in the word of God, okay? And this is, and if you want to read this uh, on your own, it's chapter 25 of Matthew, all right? Chapter 25 of the book of Matthew. Now, his reason is that to every man according to his several abilities, okay? So, you know, maybe the guy that's 60 years old and has a lot of experience and really knows what he's doing, he, he gave that one five, okay? And the guy that's 40 years old, he has some experience, but not as much experience as the guy that's 60, okay? So according to his several abilities, so, you know, one may be from a family that they know how to wheel and deal, all right? Uh, then, and, and the other one, you know, maybe he's a new guy, doesn't know a whole lot, but we're going to try him anyway, okay? So according to their abilities, okay? Because remember, the Lord puts not on anyone a duty that is beyond their capacity. God doesn't do that. Okay, so he went on his journey. Okay, so the man that received five talents began to trade with them. And he soon doubled it. He had produced five other talents in profit. Okay, the one that received two, he traded with the two and he had produced a profit. Uh, both men produced a 100% profit. The five became 10, the two became four. Now the man that had one, he lived in fear, okay? Now listen to his reasoning here, okay? He dug a hole in the earth and put it in the hole, okay? So, cause he didn't want to lose it. See, you have to, see this thing about capitalism, Capitalism, the root word of capitalism is capital. Capital is something you have already earned, okay? And so this is why capitalism is sacred because it's the substance you've put your blood, sweat, and toil and you have already earned something, okay? It is yours. So you, in order to earn more, you have to put that which you have at risk, okay? And so by putting it at risk, it's in play, okay? And you are uncertain how it's going to turn out. You may win, you may lose, okay? So you start out with $100,000, you go out here and you buy a um, you buy a house, okay? And say the house costs you $75,000 and you think you can 
repair the house for 25,000, okay? And you start repairing the house and you find out termites have eaten the house up and you're 25,000, you can't fix the house for 25,000. It's gonna cost you 75,000 to fix the house, okay? And this is not unusual in the real world for these type things to happen, folks. So you think you're going to spend 100000 and you're going to sell this house for 150000 and you're going to make fifty. But instead, you're going to spend, you spent seventy five to buy the house. You're going to spend another seventy five to fix the house. And you're going to, and the house is going to be worth one fifty. So it would be a break even if you had another 50,000. But since you don't have another 50,000, you have to borrow it. And the person from whom you get the loan, when you pay them back, there's going to be interest attached, which is fair. Okay. So you, you borrow 50, you pay back 60 maybe. Okay. So Assuming that the person, if you can find such a loan, and when it works out and you sell it, you've lost $10,000. Okay, So this is the thing when you take what you have and you put it at risk. You're, you have capital and you risk your capital in the expectation of a gain. You may gain, you may not gain. Okay, And so this is capitalism. And this is a, a person's life substance. This is how this individual would feed his family, pay his bills, educate his children. This is a big deal, okay? And so what the neoliberal left wants you to think is just a bunch of evil, rich, greedy people who are living off of other people. It's, and, and this is what actually happens in capitalism. And, and, you see, and, and Jesus, this, I'm going to tell you, this is why Jesus told the story of the man who was angry at the man who did not put that one talent. And one talent is a lot of money, okay? It's a lot of money. It's, it's a talent of gold, okay? It's a lot of money. So while the gold is in a hole in the ground, it cannot be working the magic that money works in capitalism. So let's take the example of, let's say the example, they were going to buy a house and they were going to repair it and then sell it. And then that's how they're going to increase the money for when the Lord came back and he can say, well, hey, I, you gave me five, I'm giving you back 10. You gave me two, I'm giving you back four. Okay. The guy that had the one, it was in a hole in the ground. This is why Jesus told the story of the anger. Because that money in the other story uh, in in, uh, in Luke, he wrapped it in a napkin, okay? Uh, so basically the same story, but he didn't deploy it, okay? So when in capitalism, when you deploy capital with intelligence, you're purchasing things that other people have produced. See, you're not the only one. I'm not the only one. The uh, that's that has to a, a family to take care of. OK, the man who got the five talents, he was not the only person that had to benefit, you know, economically. The man with four talents, he wasn't the only one. OK, other people have to benefit also. And so how do other people benefit from your economic activity? OK, so you bought the house. Well, now the real estate uh, agent is able to feed his or her family. The real estate attorney who has to do the legal work, they're able to take some money home to mama, okay? The, the, when it's time to repair, the contractors, the electrician, the plumber, the roofer, the painter, they all have families, okay? The, the people that make the, um, the, um, the granite countertops, okay? They have families that have to be fed, you see? The building inspector, he has a family, okay? It's hot, and you're going to go to the store and buy some ice and some Gatorade. You know, bring that back to the job site. Well, the guy that sold you the ice and the water, he has a family, okay? And not just the painter, the people that work in the paint store, they have families. And so all this talk about 
you know, the, the inanity of this, okay? Preachers need to preach real things in the pulpit, okay? This is real. And so in any congregation, there are people that will be nodding their head. Yeah, that's right, Brother Craig, because I work at the paint store. I work at Lowe's. I work at Home Depot. You know, you go put gas in the truck so you can get to the job. There's somebody that depends on that, okay? There's somebody out lonely on a big oil derrick out in the middle of the uh, the bay, okay? And he's depending on us to buy gas because he produces oil that is refined into gas. Everybody benefits, even the taxes that are paid, all the evil, wicked Democrats that do nothing but sit up in their office and devise evilness and wickedness, they have to get paid and feed their family. Yeah, that's right, because, you know, their kids can't help that their mom and dad is an evil Democrat. <laughs> their kids need to eat, too. <laughs> but uh, so this is this is biblical. This is biblical. There's a reason why Jesus was angry. And people think that, oh, he was just angry because you didn't double my money. No, he's angry because the money didn't circulate. And the doubling of the money is the result of the circulation, not the goal of the circulation. It's the it's it's the it's 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 making sure that because see, God wants it just like when when God sends a a, a rainstorm, okay. The benefit is all over the place, okay? And I might pray for rain for my garden, but my neighbor's garden gets some rain too, okay? And God doesn't care if he's a Republican or Democrat, black or white, rich or poor, tall tall or short. God doesn't care. God sends to set it up so that it rains on one, it rains on all, okay? And so in, uh, in capitalists, this is why the coalition our coalition is a holy and righteous coalition, Christian, conservative, constitutional, capitalistic coalition, okay? And so capitalism is a beautiful thing. Learn how to defend capitalism, okay? The next time someone talks about the evil, rich, greedy, evil, greedy, rich man, oh, all he wants to do is buy a yacht. Yeah, Joker buys a yacht. The guy down at the shipyard got some overtime, okay? Because there's 10 other rich men that want to have a yacht also, so there's overtime. He gets to take that overtime check home to his family, okay? You tell them jokers to put that in their pipe and smoke it. Always a bad-mouthing uh, capitalism. And then what do we do? We retreat. You know, we act like, you know, there's something wrong with Donald Trump being a billionaire or this one being a billionaire, that one being a billionaire. Now, if you're a billionaire like George Soros and you're using your wealth to destabilize America, there is something wrong with that. But if even if, you know, I would have no desire to have a yacht or a Bentley or anything like that. But for those out there that do want one, you know, the guy that sold the Bentley, he's happy. He got a commission check. Okay. Even if you take your family out to the most expensive restaurant in your, in your city. OK, now oh, look at him. He's evil, rich, greedy guy. He's wasting money. Look at that. Look at him. So what would this neoliberal idiot have to happen? The waitress at the restaurant not get any tips that night? Is, is that what they want? Because, see, that's what's happening all over the country. People are not able to earn. This is war. This is economic war. Economic war. And it's waged, the biological war was waged by the Chinese. The economic war is waged by the Democrats. It's biblical, okay? Read it yourself and ask yourself, wow, why was there so much anger? Okay, let me show you how much anger there was. I'm gonna go through this one and the other one and then we're gonna close it out, okay? And um, so, now listen to what the Lord said to those that did, that doubled his, his money, not their money. They doubled 
the Lord's money. And then listen to what he said to the person that did not even deploy God's money. God doesn't want his money sitting in a safe. It can't benefit anyone, okay? Even if you just put the money in the bank or if you buy stocks with it. If you buy stocks with the money, the company that sold you the stock, they use that money to retrofit factories, hire new employees, upscale their training so they can be more competitive in the marketplace. The benefit just flows, okay? It been no, there's nothing you can do with money except put it in a safe that does not benefit other people. And this is what God wants us to do. Be a blessing to others, okay? Be a blessing to others. Now, don't donate your money to Black Lives Matter. They've gotten $1.6 billion to go around this country and to steal, kill, and destroy, okay? So, there. Yeah. And another thing people do, rich people do, rich people donate. People that are not so rich donate, okay? And so if you, you know, this wasn't my intent, but now I'm going to say it, okay? The Lord put it on me to say, if, <laughs> if you're looking for somewhere to donate, the First Amendment Inc., okay? That's our, that's our organization. You go to our website, thereallyrealdeal.com, thereallyrealdeal.com. Click the donate uh, button. And uh, we, we will definitely, uh, we have been putting uh, other people's money to very, very, very uh, good use. Never has a salary come to uh, Brother Craig. Never, never has, okay, in 12 years, okay? There, but there's uh, much work that can be done with God's money that you have possession of. A lot of good that can be uh, done by that. Now, the uh, the enemy, they're not bashful about giving money to demonic uh, organizations. Uh, the Democrat Party is bursting with money. Black Lives Matter has $1.6 billion, not $1.6 million, $1.6 billion, okay? And ditto, and I could name just many, many, many uh, left-wing organizations whose goal is to destroy Christianity, to destroy capital, free market capitalism anyway, they love crony capitalism. They hate free market capitalism. And um, that's the, crony capitalism is the demonic infiltration of capitalism, just like they've infiltrated many churches. They've infiltrated most universities. They certainly have infiltrated Hollywood and taken over, you know, 85, 90 percent of uh, Hollywood production. It's just it spews out filth, just filth, 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 it's just constantly, constantly evil teaching people uh, to hate that which is good and to love that which is evil, okay? So, but we uh, we who are watchmen on the wall, we have to get up off our took us and, uh, and do something about it, okay? A lot of folks talk about it. Your friendly neighborhood, Hatchet Man, Brother Craig, I do my part to do something about it, and I'm asking you to do your part. And so, now, back to this so I can wrap things up uh, for the day. Now... The um, notice what the Lord says to the, the, the gentleman with five talents and the gentleman with two talents. He says the same thing to them. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Okay. And then. The one that received one talent came and he said, Lord, I knew that you are a hard man. OK, listen to this now, particularly those of you who may be under some impression that Jesus is just, you know, this nice guy that's walking around saying these little soft things. OK, listen. Jesus told this story. Okay, it's being recounted here in the book of Matthew. Then I'm going to go over in Luke and I'm going to read what Luke wrote about. Both of them witnessed Jesus say this. Okay, so Jesus tell, is telling this story. Okay, Lord, and he's talking. Jesus is now talking about the man who dug a hole and put the one unit of gold 
in the ground rather than put it at risk and let it circulate in the economic system where it not only could grow, but it could benefit other people. So he says, I knew that you are a hard man. You are a hard man, okay? You reap where you have not sown. You gather where you have not strawed. And I was afraid. And I went and I hid the money you gave me in the earth. And lo, there, now you have it. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I'm a hard man. You knew that I reap where I have not sown. You knew that I gather where I have not strawed. Though, shouldn't you have at least put my money to the exchangers? In other words, buy a CD, deposit it in the bank, okay? Then when I come back, at a minimum, I could have my money with interest, okay? Now, remember what I told you now. The only thing you can do with money that does not benefit someone is to do what this man did, dig a hole or put it in a safe or but because even if you put it in the bank, the bank loans it out to people. That's how they pay interest. Now, granted, today is a little teeny bit of interest, 1%, 2%. It's not much, but it's something, okay? Because if the bank loans it out, and so other people get to benefit from it, okay? And this is what God wants, because it all belongs to God, and God wants to see who can circulate what is his, okay? So... Now, let me get back to my point here. Uh, okay, so at least I could have got my money back plus interest. Therefore, take the talent from him. He's talking to the, his other servants and give it to the man that has 10. For unto everyone that has, it shall be given. And he that has he, he shall have abundance, okay? But from him that has not, it will be taken even that which he has, okay? And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, okay? So, it's, you know, send him to hell, basically, all right? There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth, all right? So, now... Last thing we're going to do, and then we, I'm going to let you go. I appreciate you all being here, and I see you all up there, and I, I appreciate it. All right? Now, the same story being told this time through the eyes of Luke, the physician, okay? And I'm going to read the part before the story this time because and it, it there's a link to it, okay? Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Okay, he wanted to see Jesus and he could not because it's, it's written here, he was of little stature. Okay, so here you have, um, he's rich, but he's not a big shot. Okay, so he can't get close to Jesus. The big shots are getting, they said there's a press, so there's a crowd around Jesus and he can't make his way through the crowd. So he climbs a tree so he can have a good eye shot he just wants to see Jesus, okay? And so, and he ran and he climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he knew Jesus was going to pass that way. So Jesus came to the place, looked up. This is in Jericho, okay? Saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, quickly come down because I have to spend the night at your house tonight, okay? So his he is a person not of, he's, he has money, but he's not of high stature. This is the word of God. This is a story. Jesus is telling this story, okay? And well, at this point, it's Luke recounting Jesus talking, okay? 
And so uh, the people saw it and they murmured, okay? See, people, a lot of times people are envious, okay? Oh, Jesus is going to stay with him, okay? He has money. I don't have money, <laughs> okay? They're murmuring, okay? Um, and they're, they're saying not only are they murmuring, but they're calling the man Zacchaeus a sinner, okay? Jesus is going to, because remember now, Jesus hung out with the regular guys, you know, guys like me, maybe guys like you, okay? Je Jesus didn't go hang out with the governor. He, he hung out with dudes like Brother Craig, okay? I'm so honored to be, you know, what do they call us? Deplorable, uh, bitter clingers, okay? Obama said, you, you know, you people, you cling to your God and your guns, okay? Do you cling to your God and your guns? Okay, Jesus would have hung out with you, okay? <laughs> so... Uh, so Jesus is hanging out with this person and other people, they think he's a sinner. Okay. They're murmuring. Okay. You know, why he, why didn't he come and hang out with us? The pristine, you know, the, the religious leaders. Okay. Um, so Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, look, behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold, okay? And Jesus said to the man, this day is salvation come to this house for so much as he is also a son of Abraham, okay? And so, the, in other words, this man is Jewish He's just not in the Jewish hierarchy. And so the Jewish hierarchy looks down their nose at him, okay? Because he's he's an ordinary guy. He's done well for himself, but he's ordinary. And then, see, and Jesus loves the ordinary, okay? Because Jesus has sharp things to say to people that are in power. He has sharp things to say to the uh, disciples that were with him, okay? Because remember now, he told them, you know, you don't get it. Uh, you know, are you, are you, well, do you not get it? Okay. Are you dense? Okay. Or why are you sleep? I'm sweating blood and you're asleep. You can't stay awake with me. So this is why I call certain people decaffeinated Christians because Jesus said they don't have enough energy to stay awake and, and to fight the fight. Okay. You can't stay, you can't hang with me for another hour, you got to get some sleep. Decaffeinated Christians, okay? Don't get mad at me. I'm just quoting the Bible, okay? If anyone thinks I'm quoting it out of context, shoot me an email. We can talk about it, okay? Now, back to uh, chapter 19 of the book of Luke, all right? Now, Jesus says, Okay, he is also a son of Abraham. In verse 10, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Okay, so Jesus is, is, is seeking and saving and you got people that are murmuring over his choice of uh, company to keep. Okay, and Jesus, he's not paying them any attention. He's focused on doing what he has to do. He's come to seek and to save now that which was lost all right and so listen at how this is phrased here and as they heard these things he added okay so the people are listening to what jesus is saying and jesus is perceiving them listening and murmuring and it says and he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear, okay? So this, so Jesus is reading the thoughts of the people. He's going to Jerusalem, okay? And He's literally reading people's minds, okay? So he knows they need to hear this next parable. So he gives it to them. And it's basically a repeat of 
the version of this parable that Matthew recorded because they both witnessed it and they both recorded it in their own way uh, in, in their books and in their letters. Now, so this is the parable that he spake, okay? Uh, he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return, okay? That's Jesus, okay? He's receiving a kingdom, he's going away, and he's going to return, okay? He called to his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds. The other one, they called them talents. This one, it says pounds, okay? 10 pounds. So I guess each one got a pound of gold. And he said, uh, occupy until I occupy this until I come back. It says, listen to this now. But his citizens hated him. Hated him. Okay. So this is Jesus talking about himself, basically. They, the citizens hated him. Okay. So you remember now when the, when the election came, when they said, uh, am I to release to you this Jesus who Pilate said I think is innocent or do I release to you this Barabbas who is a, a convicted a robber and killer? The people said give us Barabbas. They didn't say give us Jesus. Okay. So there's certain citizens that hated him. All right. Now, and we think when people hate us, it's like it's something to whine and cry about. <laughs> Yeah, right. So, <laughs> um, all right, Brother Craig, let me get back on, on point here now. Okay, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Okay, so this is what people are saying. They hate Jesus. They're not going to have Jesus reign over them. And it came to pass that when he had returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants be called unto him to whom he had given the money that, th that he might know how much every man had gained by trading, okay? So Jesus wants there to be a gain, okay? A gain, okay? Whether that's, you know, you can interpret this various ways. You could have all small congregation and grow it, bringing more people to the faith. You could grow influence of promoting the godly message. You could, you know, it doesn't have to be just money, but God's kingdom requires money just like Satan's kingdom requires money. Then people don't have a problem giving money to Satan. They only have a problem seems like giving money to God. You know, everything is for real now, okay? Uh, whether you're talking about uh, airtime or, you know, it, it costs just as much money to produce a porno movie as it costs to produce a Christian movie. Okay. And so, but no one ever went broke making porno movies because people, they're going to, they're going to buy that. Okay. They're going to, they're going to support that. They might do it in secret, but they're going to whip that credit card out and they're going to buy it. Okay. And so, um, you know, this is, uh, really, really uh, pertinent to not only the times we live in, but any, any time. This is, this is very, very pertinent. So he gave them each 10 pounds and he said, keep until I come back. Uh, some of them said, we, we hate him and we're not going to have him reign over us. He receives his kingdom. He comes back and he wants an accounting. Okay. So one by one, they come up. The first man comes up, Lord, now it was 10 of them. So th this time, this telling of the story, they each had the same amount. They each had one pound, okay? Um, the other telling of the story, one man had five, one man had two, and our third man had one. But in um, this telling of the story, he says, thy pound has gained 10 pounds. So this guy multiplied it by 10. That's like you got $100,000 and you turn it into a million. That's the equivalent here. OK, so he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in. OK, I've skipped up too much. 
Okay, because thou hast been faithful in very little, have thou authority over 10 cities, okay? So he multiplied the money by tenfold, which to Jesus, he says, that's little, okay? That's little, okay? So money to Jesus is a little thing. It's an indication of a big thing. It's an indication of the state of your heart. It's an indication of the state of your mind. But the money itself is little, okay? So Jesus is saying to him, let me pull it back. And again, this is chapter 19 of the book of Luke. And he said unto him, well done, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little. Have thou authority over 10 cities, okay? And the second man came, he gained five pounds, okay? He took the one and made it into five. And again, that's like he gave him $100,000 worth of gold and he's returning $500,000 worth of gold. So and he says, likewise to him, be thou also over five cities, okay? And now the third one is coming. Lord, behold, here is thy pound. I have kept it laid up in a napkin, okay? In a napkin, okay? So that's just like, in Matthew's telling of the story, the guy dug a hole and put it in the ground or someone is under the mattress or they made a hole in the wall, put it in the hole and then cover the, cover the hole up, okay? Or it's in the safe, okay? So it's in the safe, they think the money is safe, all right? And remember, the Lord wants the money to circulate so it can benefit others. If you And, and again, he says the same thing here. Man, you could have at least put the money in the bank so you it, I would have interest. So what happens when the money goes in the bank? The bank loans it out, someone else benefits, okay? Take your wife out to dinner, the waitress gets a big fat tip. Buy a yacht, there's overtime down at the um, at the yacht company, okay? Build an addition onto your house, all kinds of contractors are happy, okay? The framer, the roofer, the electrician, the plumber, the sheetrock guy, the painter, Okay, not to mention the architect. Okay, if it's that elaborate where you need an architect, but the money circulates. This is what God wants. He wants his money to circulate. Okay, his money. Okay, or again, you know, people donate. Okay, but um, so let me finish this up. All right, and he says to his Lord, for I feared thee. Listen to how this is worded, okay? Because, and it's just like Matthew's version of the same story, because thou art an austere man, okay? So in Matthew's version, he's the guy with full of fear. He says, because I know you're a hard man, okay? And so, again, people think of Jesus as, you know, soft, okay? He's telling the story of being hard, okay? Nothing soft about Jesus. And uh, so, oh, I would love to have more preachers preach like this, okay? Jesus, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the hard side, the tough side, okay? And, but it's a story with a point, okay? Because, it, you know, he wants things to circulate so that more people can benefit, okay? He wants things to grow so that the benefit reaches more people. He wants this program to grow. So his wisdom, this is not my wisdom, his wisdom can reach more people because if you turn the news on, it's obvious that there's a lot of uh, lack of wisdom going on out here, okay? So um, now... And it says, another came, okay, and he feared thee. And see, the, the rest of these people, it was 10 of them, okay? The first two, the first one multiplied it by 10. The second one multiplied it by five. Now, here comes the third one. Put it in a napkin. It says, I will, out of thine own mouth, I will judge thee, okay? So he's saying, that out of your own mouth, you said, 
I fear you because you are steer, because you take up what you have not laid down and you reap what you did not sow. Okay. And so he said, out of your own mouth, you just told me that you knew that I was a hard man and austere man. I take up that which I lay not down. I reap that which I did not sow. Okay. He says, wherefore, then why didn't you give my money to the bank? So at least there could be interest. I don't like this term. They use the term here, usury. I, I don't like that term, but. I think usury is a usurious, unreasonable amount of interest where you're taking unfair advantage of someone who's desperate and they can't say no. OK, I think that's usury. And um, but, you know, you have all these various interpretations uh, because it was not written in English. OK, so that's, you know, the Brother Craig version there. It, um, reading it, it does say usury. I said interest. OK. And I'm giving you my reason in case you read it yourself and you might want to say, well, Brother Craig, you read it wrong. No, I didn't read it wrong. I'm, I'm editing as I read and I'm giving you what I think the Lord wants me to give you. So, um, and then he said unto them, those that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to the one that has 10. Okay. And they said to him, Lord, See, this is, people don't understand the mind of God. They're going to talk to the Lord and they're going to say, but Lord, he already has 10 pounds. Didn't he just tell you to take it from this man and give it to the man that has 10 pounds? So obviously he knew it <laughs> because that's, he didn't say give it to Sam. He said, or oh, oh, Samuel, or oh, whatever his name may have been, he said, give it to the one that has 10 pounds. So God knew this, okay? <laughs> For I say unto you that unto everyone which has, it shall be given. And from him that has not, even that which he has, it shall be taken away, okay? Word of God not the word of Brother Craig, okay? So, and when he had, uh, but those, my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me, okay? This is Jesus telling a parable, okay? Let me repeat, this is the book of Luke, and this is chapter 19. So Jesus is telling this parable of a man who was a nobleman. He was of noble birth. He was to receive a kingdom. He left. He received his kingdom. He came back. While he was gone, the, those that were murmuring, they said, we, uh, we hate this man and we, he will not reign over us. Now, the man knew that they, he could read their minds. So in his absence, they said this, but he knew they said it because he recited the, it back to them. And he said, bring them hither to me and have them slain before me. Okay? Preachers don't like to preach that. Okay? They only want... Jesus is a nice guy, and Jesus is a nice guy, but Jesus is a nice guy within justice, okay? And we all have free will, and it was their free will to say, I hate this Jesus, and he will not reign over my life. They have free will. They exercised that free will, okay? And now my video just had a little hiccup here. Okay, and, um, but, okay, see, it seems we're back on track. All right, so they exercised that free will, and this is, this is what Jesus uh, had, had to, uh, to say about it, okay? And so, you know, I think we've probably had enough uh, for today, and I really appreciate you all being there. And I just want to pray over you all, uh, you watching uh, and listening live. 
as well as those that will view this later. Uh, I would just pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you, each and every one of you in these tense times we live in. Uh, the, the thief uh, who comes not uh, but to steal, kill, and destroy is alive and well. Uh, they're, they're stealing uh, through unnecessary medications. They're killing by the denial of medications that work. They're destroying by allowing this chaos when it's so easy, uh, it's so easy to stop, okay? Steal, kill, and destroy. It is satanic. It is uh, being uh, promulgated by people that are yielded vessels of Satan, okay? And this is the uh, Democrat Party, the Communist Party, the Socialist Party. Um, these are anarchists. These are atheists. These are people that hate God, and they have said out of their mouths, God will not reign over us. This is who is doing this. And I'm praying that you will not have any of this come nigh to you, because the word of God makes that promise to you. It will not come nigh to thee. Okay, and so I pray over you. I pray over your loved ones. I pray that the Lord would bless you. The Lord would keep you. The Lord would make his face to shine upon you. And the Lord would be gracious unto you. And until next week, uh, just be blessed. Uh, keep your chin up. Keep the faith up. Okay. Um, hey, next week. Same hatchet time, same hatchet station. God bless you.